Welcome folks to our January 31st safety work group meeting. My name is Anna Holder. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I'm an environmental scientist with the California State Water Resources Control Board. And I am our one of our safety work group co-chairs. And I'm here with uh, Jay, who's muted. <laughs> Classic. We should have rehearsed that more. Uh, uh, Jay Davis from SFEI, all the other co-chair of the safety work group. Good morning, everybody. Awesome. So we've got a lot of content to go over today. But before we dive in, um, I like to start our meetings with a moment to acknowledge and express gratitude for tribal lands in California. The Cal EPA building and the hub of this work group is located in a place that we now call Sacramento, California, which was and still is a gathering place for many local tribes who have lived throughout the Central Valley and foothills since time immemorial and are the original stewards of these lands and waters. These people include the Nishinan, Maidu, and Miwok peoples, and the Putwin and Wintu nations, who have remained committed to the stewardship of these lands and waters over many, many centuries. centuries. And it's really important for us to recognize that these are just words, and our actions are more important. And we want to acknowledge and remember these communities in all of the work we do as we um, take steps to operationalize equity throughout our programs and activities um, for the coming years. And um, we hope this work and partnerships with these governments and communities honor their legacies, their lives, and their descendants. So with that, I will pass it to Jay, who will take us through roll call. Thanks, Anna. Um... Good morning, everybody. It's an exciting morning. We've got an exciting stew meeting and then this big weather system moving in. But I'll be watching out my window here. The raindrops are starting to fall in Half Moon Bay. Um, and uh, the group is smaller today than we've had lately. So the quantity is a bit low, but the quality is very high. So thank you all for joining. Um, so let's start with the peer review panel. Harry Olendorf. Yeah. Morning, Harry. Um, EPA. Don't think I saw anybody from EPA. Oweeha. Uh, Wes Smith here from Oweeha. And Lauren Chumney here as well. Good morning. And Trent Fan Mosso. Good morning. Great. Moss Landing. Autumn Bonema. Billy Jekyll. Great. Um, so we'll go through the regions. Region one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, Kelly, you're muted, but I think you said, hi, Kelly Huck, good morning. <laughs> Kelly Huck here, good morning. I turned on my camera, but not my mic. <laughs> uh, region 7. Region 8. Region 9. Chad Laughlin here, good morning. Okay, State Board. You know we have at least one other besides Anna. Nick's here. I don't know if they wait for the council or not, but Nick's here. Jennifer said hi in the chat. Okay. All right. My, I, I kept on hitting the the it which I just would not unmute. <laughs> like I hit it ten times. <laughs> All right, and we got Nick from the state board slash monitoring council. Um any tribal? Representatives or 
anybody who I've missed? Um, Zwen, we'll go ahead and let you say something. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Zwen Coffin from Biomonitoring California at the California Department of Public Health. Great. Thanks. Okay, is that everybody? I think so. I, th I, I saw Noah popped on. Oh, yeah, Noah. Good morning, everyone. I'm Noah Benadaret. I'm with CDFW OSPAR. I'm their fisheries coordinator. I've been on staff for a couple months and was invited to uh, listen in yesterday. We had a meeting with Wes and Anna and Autumn. So I'm uh, just going to be like hanging back and taking notes. So thanks so much for letting me let me participate. Well, thanks for joining. Welcome. Welcome to the stew. <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, to start the meeting, we're doing some of our usual items. We'll, we'll run through quick updates on a variety of things that we have in the works. Um, and as that we're then going to continue the discussion of priorities assessment, um, and Anna's gonna give an overview, and then um, Wes from OEA will give OEA's perspective on long-term priorities. Then we have a break, and if we have tribes and CBOs uh, in attendance, then we've got an open forum item for that, and then we'll wrap up. Any questions about the agenda or constraints that we should know about? Um, unless we get some tribal and CBO reps showing up, we'll probably end earlier than... than uh, scheduled yeah i think what we'll do is um since all of you are familiar faces and you know what's happening um after oeha's um presentation um you all can jump off and um i do want to hang around during the time that we place mm -hmm. the agenda just in case folks had a break in their schedule and wanted to jump on and, and share with us. I don't want the Zoom to be off. So, um, and then the wrap up and adjourn will be recorded and in the notes, but it's nothing new um, for everyone that's here. So I think that'll be our plan for today. So if OEHA's um, awesome talk is super short, then you can just sign off or you can hang out with me in the Zoom room, uh, <laughs> whatever works. All right, so we have, don't feel uh, like you're rushed in any way. We've got <laughs> plenty of time. Um, okay. So let's on to the quick updates. First, my weather update. It's raining now in Ephraim Bay. <laughs> Storm has begun. Um, okay, so uh, we go through year by year to give the status of, of uh, work that's still in progress. So 2020 is still in progress because of the organics data and along with 2021 and 2022, uh, because of the organics data, um, we expect that the organics data for 2020 and 2021 will be in seed in soon. Um, at least some of those were uh, provided from by Babcock to Swamp IQ. So uh, that's moving along. And then the uh, 22 organics are expected in May. And the last I heard Babcock, we were still waiting for Babcock to submit those to Swamp IQ. So those are still in the works. Um, some, some, uh, uh, some news on 2023 is that the cruise report is going to be posted very soon. Um, and uh, if anybody's hasn't ever looked at one of the cruise reports, I, I recommend it. It's uh, the Moss Signing does a great job of summarizing their activities at each of the locations. And if, if you ever really want to drill in on uh, where the fish were caught, you know what was caught, um, what they saw out there, uh, it's a great great resource for that. So that that'll be posted very soon like a matter of a day or two or something like that, Anna, right? Yeah, I just need to submit the request to our IT department for them to post it. 
Um, so I'm planning on doing that today or tomorrow, and then it takes them a day or two to get it actually on the website. So it should be, I'll be able to link it when I send a notice of, um, the, when the notes are ready and things like that, but it'll be available on the site before then. Great. And then the metals from Lakes Panel 5 are in season and the organics um, are to be determined. Okay, next. All right, and then another update on uh, getting our documentation. Um, moving our documentation along, we, we have the final version of the, the final documentation of the 24 coast monitoring. And um, this is just a short document to, to show what's changed since we published the original plan in 2018. Some of the key items are shown here on the slide. Um, the main things that changed from 2018 um, were we added a few species to the overall target list based on the input from DPH. And we had discussion about that a couple of stew meetings ago. Um, so we did we did uh, capture that input. And then um, another thing that um, caused some more extensive updating was um, since we've been out on the coast, um, uh, since the last time we were out, OEHA came out with a their document on guidance for for um, collecting fish data, which included a lot of size um, your guidance on uh, size ranges for different species. So I revised the, that information in our plan to be consistent with OEHA's input. So that, that changed um, the size ranges for a lot of different species. So most of what we've got documented now is capturing that. So uh, this is published um, and available on, on the website. Okay, uh, next up, it, the next bullet is on consumption advisories, which Anna keeps track, good track of. I think, uh, so there's there's one new advisory. I don't know, uh, Oiha, how would you guys have anything else to add to that? In the, hopefully near future, we'll be working on getting Lake Morena out. So that's the next one on the docket. Great. All right. Um, another standing item that we have is updates on TMDLs. Does anybody have any news on TMDLs? There's no new updates from the state board perspective. And we usually hear from um, Lauren, who's right. not on the call. Right. Okay. But I don't know if the other regional board reps, if you have any updates you want to share on CMDLs in your region. Okay, okay not, uh, not hearing any. <laughs> okay, on to the monitoring council. Um, Nick, do you have any highlights? Mm -hmm. Oh, Nick, oh, Nick, I saw Nick get back on. If uh, if you're talking to us, Nick, you're muted. Okay, he might have stepped away. So yeah. um, all of the 2024 meetings or all meetings um, until further notice are going to be virtual um, for the council. And the next virtual meeting is scheduled for April 5th. And the agenda is usually sent out a little bit beforehand um, and posted on the council website at the link that's on the slide. I think that's good enough. Great. That's all I know. <laughs> all right, let's, let's move on. All right, Anna. Yeah, so... Um, for those that don't know, we have launched a tribally-centered bioaccumulation monitoring training series. 
um, to support partnership and uh, capacity development for our tribal government partners. Um, all of the trainings will be virtual. We've got um, six total, but there are four that are scheduled. The, um, the other two, three will be um, October to December this year. And we thought it would be really unkind to ask people when they would want a meeting at uh, the end of the year. So we had our first training series yesterday. Um, we had pretty good attendance and some great discussions and it was a nice kickoff. Um, we announced the trainings only a couple of weeks ago and we already have um, good registration numbers for the next couple of trainings. So I suspect as word gets out um, and folks keep talking that we'll have even more folks registering and then also attending the meeting. So um, these trainings are basically a way for us to be a little bit more transparent about how we do what we do and um, make it clear where to find resources and, and things like that. So tribes can take what works for them um, and leave the, the rest. And also all of the trainings, the, the um, content will be shared on the training website. So after the trainings, if other groups like community-based organizations or other groups that want to monitor will find use for these this content and material, they'll have access to it as well. So um, yeah, we had our first training yesterday and the next one is going to be led by Jay um, and Swamp IQ. And I think Oweha is going to make a guest appearance um, and talking about monitoring study design and preparation. Anything anyone wants to add there? Just that uh, Anna was the, uh, the main attraction at the meeting yesterday and did a great job. Uh, got got the training series off to a really good start, and I was I was happy to see the good turnout. Thanks, Jay. Um, all right, next up is the San Francisco region realignment. So um, the San Francisco region tribal coordinator and I sent an email out to tribes and community based organizations in the region on Monday. And so we're starting to hear back from folks that are wanting to opt into this process. The first workshop is going to be for tribes and community, both tribes and community-based organizations. We're just gonna kind of do a, a grounding about the process and get everyone oriented so we can really hit the ground money running in March and start soliciting feedback on the location, species and pollutants that these folks uh, would like us to monitor and take a look at as part of the realignment process. Um, these workshops are not open to the public, it's invite only, but if you're working with a tribe or a community-based organization and they haven't received an email, but they they do work in the San Francisco region um, or represent communities in the San Francisco region, please share this information with them and um, they can email me and we'll, we'll get them part of the group. Uh, I think that's it. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. Um, the realignment is a three-year process. So this is the very first step of the first three-year or three-year process. More workshops and opportunities to engage will be coming, um, but we wanted to focus on the kickoff for now. Uh, I think that's it. And then, uh, of course, you'll be sort of keeping this group updated as to how things are moving along. Yeah, so just like we did with the San Diego region, I'll provide updates on the realignment a couple times a year. Every the um, there's not a ton to update at every <laughs> San Diego worker meeting. It's just kind of a work in progress. But when um, we've got things to share, products, exciting news, things like that, I'll definitely keep the stew in the loop. Cool. Okay. Okay. So, uh, we've got a set of uh, updates on San Francisco Bay, um, a hotbed of activity with the realignment and RMP and a couple of other projects. So uh, from the RMP, a um, couple of resource bullets the, at the annual meeting, we had a, 
uh, talk on PFAS and bay fish. Um, and that's available on, on the website, following the link in the slides here. Uh, and then um, based on the same data set um, that where we um, last year, uh, well, probably starting in 2022, we had a project where we um, used our archives, our archives to expand the PFAS data set for the Bay, um, expanding on the limited number of samples that were analyzed in our last round of sampling in 2019 and um, uh, fleshed out that data set pretty thoroughly. Um, so there's a manuscript that was out for review uh, that we got. The review period's over now and we're, we're revising it and going to submit it. But um, if you'd like to see the draft, just shoot me an email. Um, and then this year we're Monitoring again, we we monitor sport fish in the bay on a five year cycle, and um, we're we're able. We've got some additional funds supplementing the the usual amount from the RMP. Um, the additional funds are from EPA and EPA project, so we are able to expand what we're doing. And <clears throat> one of the major changes to the design this year is that we'll be looking at PFAS in all the samples like like we do for mercury and PCBs. Um, so we had a, a, meet, a meeting with stakeholders, some of you folks in, uh, in December to, to get input. Um, and we're working on getting the plan written up and getting the, the collecting permit um, for the work. Um, so that that that's process is all underway with the plan to start sampling uh, in May. Um, so that's the RMP. Um, another another project in the bay is we're working with Region Two to um, develop a questionnaire that can be used for doing surveys of subsistence fishing in the region. The idea is to develop this questionnaire and some initial um, guidance on implementing it um, with the kind of limited amount of funding that we that Region Two had available to to do to do this work. Um, there will be phase this, this phase one is developing this questionnaire. There will be a second phase where there's some pilot testing, and then it ultimately. The idea is that this uh, tool can be used by community groups around the bay to do the, to, to actually implement the surveys in their communities. So this first phase where we develop the questionnaire is um, underway. We're doing we're doing a series of three workshops. Um, the next one is coming up on February fifteenth, um, and then the third one will be in probably uh, April or May, and the project's ending in May. Um, so that's a quick summary on that. Next slide. And then another community-oriented project that I've been uh, keeping you updated on is the All Positives Possible Monitoring Project in the Carquina Strait, um, funded by EPA and uh, EPA San Francisco Bay Water Quality Improvement Fund grant. Um, it's a pretty pretty good sized budget um, to to do this focused work on the Carquina Strait. Um, we're monitoring at four locations in this area, in an area that the RMP has not covered. Um, basic basically hasn't been covered since the early '90s. So this was one of the spatial data gaps and um, be interested to get the data from this area. Um, we'll be looking at mercury, PCBs, and PFAS. We've, um, we're nearing the end of the sampling and there's two components. There's a contract, part of the project has a contractor, a consultant collecting fish like we normally do in the RMP. And that was completed and we got striped bass, sculpin, and jack smelt. And then a, a more novel part of this is having the community collect fish. Um, 
and we'll be analyzing those. And that part is continuing. And so far they've got um, a good number of striped bass and some leopard shark. Um, and um, you know that that's all they've gotten so far. Um, so another interesting project and we're learning learning lessons about working with communities and um, and uh, the seasonality of fishing. Um, one of the sort of unexpected developments or, you know, it surprised the community um, that they had, you know, I guess they, you know, they hadn't really noted it before, but um, in December, basically in December and January, um, they weren't, they haven't been able to get the other species that we, that, you know, on their, that are on their wish list. And then, you know, they, they were able to get shark. Um, so it kind of highlights the seasonality of fish availability. And um, this can be significant. And shark are a great example since they tend to have such high mercury that if people are shifting to shark because that's what's available, then their exposure to mercury could be, you know, significantly higher um, seasonally due to that. Okay. Any questions on San Francisco Bay stuff? All right, let's go on. So, yeah, I've I just added this slide because um, our bioaccumulation community is looking for uh, more help and more more folks. So, um, I've noticed. Um, announcements for seafood safety toxicologists in OIHA, and then Biomonitoring California is growing. Um, so I will actually invite Wes and, and Lauren and Swen if you want to talk about anything with these positions. Um, and if other folks have positions that they're looking to fill in bioaccumulation related work, please let me know and happy to share, spread the word um, amongst our, our email list. Yeah, thanks for uh, posting, Anna. And this position that we listed is to refill my old position as the lead for oil spills or seafood safety after oil spills in California. And you'd be working directly with NOAA. So thanks for putting that up. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to contact me. It's a fun position, too. You actually get the fish if there's a spill, unfortunately. But. Hopefully there won't be any big spills for a while. Yeah, and thanks, Anna, for, gosh, um, advertising our positions. We need all the help we can get. Um, the first two are actually Biomonitoring California, and then the last two positions you've shown are just in our branch, so not um, quite with our program, but still um, colleagues and neighbors. So um, we're, uh, you know, for our program, I'll just, since I know about the first two um, positions, the exposure assessment scientist, it does close soon. It's more of an entry level position. So a good way to get a foot in the door um, as a research scientist in Biomonitoring California in our outreach and communications team um, where I work. And then the senior research scientist is like a pretty high level, like it's an, so it's an RS4. The first one is an RS1. And so someone with a lot of experience um, in epidemiology. And we've just, we've had a hard time filling that position. We've had it open a few times. So um, it would be great if people could get the word out um, for that one. So thanks so much for getting out here. And yeah, the other jobs seem like fun too, but yeah, I'm gonna hope that we get lots of applicants and biomonitoring. Yeah, no worries. And there's the links there um, to the job descriptions if anyone wants to check them out. And folks, please reach out to me if you have any uh, questions about the process. It's not straightforward working for the state. So it's a multi-step process and I'm happy to walk you through that. Yeah. All right, any other updates from the group? Uh, before I turn it over to Anna for the next item, I wanna welcome Gary Ichikawa who joined a little bit ago. Um, Gary, I'm, I'm just making this up, but Gary's an emeritus member of the BOG slash STU. He, uh, he's been doing bioaccumulation work since before, well before the bog, even longer than I have. So 
So welcome, Gary. It's good to see you. At least your name. Uh, Jennifer. Yes. Okay, good. The button worked. Um, so I just wanted to send a message out um, kind of quickly at the end of last week. Um, Swamp IQ, or it's just Swamp, I guess it would be Swamp IQ, learned that, um, well, and I learned that um, our information, it's like our DIT, Division of Information, tech, I, I'm losing it, neither here nor there. There was a quick change that needed to happen to the um, CEDIN interface. I don't know if anyone's tried to um, pull any data off of CEDIN um, since yesterday or the day before, but uh, it has a new um, interface. I guess there were some security concerns and it became a really high priority and then it just kind of happened. Uh, there is lots of bugs. And I don't mean bugs as in collection. I mean that it's not working that great right now. And so if you notice anything, please send a message um, to me and or uh, T Tessa Fojit. Um, I would really appreciate that, especially when it comes to tissue. I guess the tissue connection is even more crazy than everything else. So super fun. Thanks for Any the heads questions? up, Jennifer. Oh, the lives of data. All right. Um, Can I ask a quick question? Sorry. Yeah, please go for it. Uh, so is data affected in the Swamp Data Warehouse? So at this point, like, where are we to be no. looking for data? This is the CDN interface. Okay, because like... So this is if... So like OEHA is a good example. They are pulling from CDN. And they're not just pulling from Swamp. Does it... Or if someone from Swamp is pulling from CDN to get Swamp projects, it could also be a little bit of a problem. Does it affect the Swamp data dashboard? Because I had a, a coworker querying data and like so much data was missing. Um, and so is that connected to this, I guess? No. Okay. No. So that's so it's not it's not Swamp at all. It is completely Seeden. So all the regional data centers, including Swamp, feed into Seeden, and it's the Seeden interface that's an issue. But does doesn't the swamp monitoring dashboard like I didn't think it did, Seed but in? maybe it does. If it's if it's if you're having problems, it's very possible. So okay. the swamp data dashboard pulls data from an API, so it doesn't necessarily yeah, utilize the seed and interface. So it sounds like all of our data are fine, but like getting it through the seed and interface is clunky right now. So it shouldn't impact right. folks accessing our data through other ways, like the um, Swamp Daily Bob that you mentioned, or the California the data, data portal, or any other yeah. ways that folks can access our data. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Anna. Yeah, I was trying to say that, and it just wasn't coming out. Got you covered. <laughs> I really appreciate you. <laughs> I'm not uh, familiar with the Swamp Data Dashboard as much. We haven't used it. Does it pull all the same data that are in Seeden? So we're actually going to have a demo of the Swamp Data Dashboard in April. Um, the developer, Michelle Tang, has been working on integrating the tissue data. Um, that's still in the works, so it's not fully connected yet, um, but it pulls swamp data from 2000 to present, um, and it makes it easier for folks to visualize the data by program or location or, or things like that. Does that, I started talking and then I forgot your question, Lauren. I'm sorry to run into your question. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that was it. I guess I was trying to figure out if we could use that um, in lieu of CEDIN for tissue data, but it sounds like not quite yet. Not quite yet. Soon though. Um, I think within the next like month or so, we should be doing some internal um, like 
quality checks to, before we do the public announcement in April. So it's coming soon and it's going to be a great So, resource. And Lauren, I would say that by using the Swamp Data Bash dashboard, you are going to be missing anything that's being put into Seeden through um, SFEI or Moth Landing through their regional data centers. Ah, uh, okay. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it's it's only it would only be a sliver. So just be aware of that. <laughs> Noted. Okay. Thanks. And then Nick, I noticed you posted a resource in the chat. Do you want to say more about that? Let me mash my yeah, view button. Um, yeah, so I just I came across this resource um, just the other, just, just yesterday afternoon, actually, and I didn't realize that Fish and Wildlife was doing um, equity work, and they have some programs on that webpage that I linked, um, including Fish in the City and Vamosa Pescar, which provides engagement with um, underprivileged communities or communities that don't necessarily fish or that don't have the resources to fish so i thought maybe it could be an interesting you were mentioning trying to grow the program and i thought jay's example the work he was doing with all positives um possible uh was interesting so it could be something to explore if you haven't already i didn't even know about it until yeah late yesterday afternoon so thanks nick yeah anything else All right, on to item three. Cool. Right Thanks. on schedule. Yeah. Um, so this is, I think, for everyone on this call, y'all have heard this spiel before, but for those that are joining us over YouTube, welcome uh, for the recording. Um, we've been working on um, a long-term monitoring priorities assessment process since about November of last year. And um, before I pass the baton over to the OEHA team to talk about their priorities, I just wanted to describe what this process is all about for some grounding. So the goals of this process um, are really to hear from the bioaccumulation monitoring community about how y'all wish we would be collecting data in the years to come. We've been rocking the bioaccumulation world and collecting a lot of data for um, you know 15 plus years now and we're at this moment in our program where we have an opportunity to pause think about what we want our future to look like and then pivot as needed so this is an opportunity to hear from folks that we haven't maybe been hearing from in the past and also our uh, long-term partners who've been part of this process since the beginning the goal, um, or by the end of this project process, um, so by March, I we really want to get an understanding of what our um, nearer near long term goals five five years or so will be, and then have the ability to make a very detailed monitoring plan for next year, um, and really make it easier for us to implement our monitoring over the next uh, five or 10 years. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. So we want to utilize this process to kind of gather as much data and information as we can in terms of priorities so that as we move forward year to year, we have everything we need at our disposal and the permitting process and preparing for monitoring can be um, much speedier as we need it to be. So today, oh, I guess I should say, um, over the past couple of months, we've heard from the water boards. So um, almost all of the regional boards have presented on what their priorities are in the context of all of the other things that the water boards have been doing. So thinking about tribal beneficial uses and TMDLs and board priorities and things like that, and really kind of thinking through what um, their regional priorities are for monitoring are over the coming years. Over the next two safety work group meetings, so today and February 28th, we're going to hear from tribal governments, community-based organizations, and our um, other agency and monitoring partners. 
OEHA, as usual, is going to kick us off and uh, start start things um, for this conversation. And then um, at the end of March, we'll come back with a synthesis of everything that we've heard and discuss, um, you know, confirm priorities in terms of what we've heard from all of the folks that have shared with us. Today, after OEHA's presentation, there's going to be an open forum for tribes and community-based organizations. So folks that don't necessarily want to give a full presentation with slides or whatever, but just want to pop in and share their thoughts and um, anything that they want to contribute. So that will be from 1050 to 1120 today. And, um, and then we'll close shortly after that. The On the left side of this, the slide here is an optional template that we developed to help um, our partners think through um, what they might want to present. This is optional. Um, partners might not have completed the template. That's OK. They might share their screen with content of, of the template. That's also fine. They might have slides. All of those ways of sharing um, priorities and expertise are welcome. So with that, I think I'm going to pass it. Nope, not yet, sorry. Um, <laughs> the next safety worker meetings, um, as I mentioned, February, we have on our agenda, we're gonna be hearing from Biomonitoring California, the San Francisco Bay Regional Monitoring Program and the Southern California Bite Regional Monitoring Program. We still have some room on the agenda. So if folks um, would like to give up to a 20 minute presentation, we will have space for that. There will also be another tribe and community-based organization open forum. Um, in March, like I said, we'll present a synthesis of what we've been hearing. I will bring all of that back to my management um, and we'll make some decisions on next steps and, and final priorities for the SWAMP statewide program. And then we will present that and plans for the next step in April. Everything will be recorded in order to attend. Um, we need registration. So the links are here on the slide. After you register, you'll receive a confirmation email. <clears throat> in that confirmation email, there should be a button to add um, something to your calendar. This has been a little bit tricky for a lot of folks, um, including myself when I first started. So just keep an eye out for that. And that's how you get a calendar invitation is through your registration. And it's a custom link specialized for you. So um, sharing with other folks won't really be helpful. If you don't want to provide um, a specific presentation, but you want to give us feedback, there's a bioaccumulation monitoring priority survey that um, can be completed in a couple of minutes if you only submit the multiple choice required questions that we'll go over in a second. Or there's open-ended questions if folks want to dedicate more time and provide more um, details. Totally up to the, um, the folks that complete the survey on what, what feels right for them. We ask that folks complete the survey by March 1st, again, so I can incorporate that into the synthesis process. The four required questions include information about your affiliation. So are you associated with a tribal government, California state agency, community-based organization, something else? Um, and then for the next three bullets, there's the multiple choice question, which again, can be completed really quickly. And then there's also a box below that to uh, enable folks to kind of give a long form response. The first question is about what water body types folks would like to see prioritized for monitoring. So you'll see lakes and reservoirs, coastal areas, rivers and streams, and you get to pick two. Um, the unfortunate reality of this program is that we have had a stagnant budget for quite some time. And so we're, we will be making hard choices over the coming months about priorities and what we can and cannot afford to do. And so the responses to this survey and folks sharing their priorities with us will help make help us make those decisions with that feedback in mind. The second question is which species um, you'd like to see prioritized. The three options are fish, shellfish, or other, and you get to pick one. And then the, the pollutants and contaminants that you'd like to see prioritized. There's 
nine listed and an other option and you get to pick five. Okay, now <laughs> we've all been waiting for. I'm gonna pass this over to the OEHA team. I assume you have slides or wanna share your screen so I can stop sharing, is that right? Hey Anna, actually we're just gonna go through the template. Oh, okay, have, great. Nothing fancy today. <laughs> awesome. Do you, um, do you wanna share your screen though? Uh, let's see. Let me see. I have two. I have too many monitors, <laughs> and I don't want to share the wrong one. Let's see. So while you're pulling that up, for those that don't know, all of again, all of you on the phone do, but OEHA has been a really close and important partner from this program since the beginning. And we often get feedback from OEHA on what data and information are needed for them to develop advisories moving forward. We heard from OEHA um, about their process and um, some upcoming priorities in the fall last last year. Um, and so this will be a little bit of an update on that, hopefully. Um, and yeah, looking forward and to it. Just as an update on that meeting, we will be following up with a document describing that process of how we would prioritize monitoring. And so that will go on our website and be a, a public facing document so everyone can be aware of the process and see how we perform that. Nice, awesome. Can you guys see this? No. Sure? no. No. Okay. Um, hmm. Your screen came up for a second and then it vanished. So maybe try sharing again. Okay. Here it comes. Can you see it? Yes. I see okay. your word document. Yes. Yes. Our template. Let's see. We'll start here. All right. Um, so no recent or future bioaccumulation monitoring, of course, we had doesn't conduct sampling. We just use the data collected by you fine folks. Um, so uh, <clears throat> for our wish list, we have a couple of um, general items and then a few specific ones that I'll go through. Um, First, we'd like to see more shellfish data from all waters in which they are found and consumed. And then echoing what a lot of the other regional water boards have said, we'd like to see more PFAS, of course, in both fish and shellfish. So those are our you know, general future hopes and wishes. Um, and then we have some specific things that we've just sort of you know, would like to see, I don't know if this is too specific for what our goals are for today, but always good to have these things on the radar. Um, for party reservoir, we'd like to see some PCB data. We have um, data from the 80s that show that they're very high in aerochlores for carp and catfish. Um, we don't use aerochlores anymore, um, but we don't have any other PCB data. So for an advisory at party reservoir, we would need to see some um, PCB data. And for Hernandez Reservoir, um, the, the data that are in CEDAN show very high levels of mercury, um, but this reservoir has gone dry and has refilled. And um, I think maybe there's been some remediation there. Um, I'm not sure on that. I was hoping there'd be somebody from Region 3 to, to confirm or deny. Um, but either way, we would need all new data for Hernandez. Um, Clear Creek we can ignore that's actually covered by our um, Sacramento River Northern Delta Advisory. <clears throat> and then for our statewide rivers analysis, we came across a couple of things. Um, one was for the canals and drains in region seven, we saw very high levels of organochlorine pesticides, which, you know, Emma kind of spoke about in our last meeting. Um, so no surprise there, but they're they're pretty high in these tiny, you know, mosquito fish and sailfin mollies. Um, so we'd like to see some data for fish that people might actually be targeting. 
Um, you know, it's my understanding that it is legal to fish in these drains in Region 7, you know, maybe not recommended per se, but, you know, we'd like to see some data for, for um, maybe more bigger sport fish. And then kind of the same thing in, in Davis Creek. Um, we have data for California roach and speckled dace, also very small fish that are high in mercury. So again, would like to see species more commonly targeted um, for Davis Creek. And uh, at OEHA, we have a general email um, that people send advisory related questions to. So we'll track requests that people have for, you know, specific species at specific advisories, um, or excuse me, in a particular water body. So, you know, this is kind of our list of where people have requested, um, you know, those species and those water bodies. So, um, you know, just one thing to sort of consider moving forward, what the public is interested in um, there, you know, we've kind of noted a trend over the years of people asking for crayfish data. So, you know, that might be something to um, keep on the radar as well. And for sticking points, um, you know, I think our increased collaboration and communication over the past few years has really reduce the amount of data coming in that um, aren't suitable for advisories, you know, like getting data for fish that don't meet a we has minimum length requirements and that sort of thing. Um, so really the only thing I could, you know, think of moving forward is, um, you know, we have, we generally base our advice on skin off fillets. So, you know, in light of the region nine realignment data all being analyzed whole, um, you know, if that continues to be a trend moving forward with the other realignments, and that's going to be how data, you know, people want to see the data collected and analyzed, then we'll need to have some, you know, internal and external conversations on how we want to handle that data. Because, um, you know, obviously our goal is not to um, put out a lot of advice that is, you know, do not consume you know, for all these species in a water body. So, you know, that's something to consider when we're looking at data analyzed whole. Um, and then also just the issues with potential risk communication, you know, for offering different kinds of advice based on fillet preparation methods, you know, might get confusing. So just sort of untangling those issues moving forward. Um, that's all I could think of for that. And then, you know, just a couple of of little things while we have the spotlight. Uh, <laughs> we've developed our short list of water bodies um, where we can develop new advisories or update existing advisories for 2024. There's about 15 water bodies or so on the list, and we generally do advice for about nine or 10, sometimes more water bodies in a year. So we won't get to all 15 probably this year. It's a very fluid list, you know, things can come on and off based on, you know, a data coming in or stakeholder requests or what have it. But um, if anybody's interested in seeing what's coming up for the state this year or, you know, their particular region, feel free to reach out. Um, happy to share, you know, what's on the docket for the year. Um, and then I also presented on this last year, but if anybody's curious about how OEHA prioritizes our water bodies, we put the process for this online. Um, we did a document um, last fall. So uh, I will put a link to that in the chat in just a minute. And then the last thing to note is that we developed a list of water bodies um, where more sampling would be ideal because of very high levels of mercury or PCBs um, and where data are also insufficient for an advisory to be developed or updated. Um, and then that list of high contaminant water bodies was submitted to um, you know, Anna and Swamp folks a few months ago. And it's just one more thing to, you know, to consider uh, moving forward with future sampling plans. And we are actually working on a process document for that analysis as well that we're hoping to put on our website, um, you know, later in the year. And that's all I have. So quick and easy. And if anybody has any questions, happy to hear them. 
That was awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, yeah, Jennifer. So um, I do know that there is a bunch of data that was from Region 7's trend that has not been um, loaded yet. So maybe some of those streams may have data. It just hasn't been loaded into the database yet. Ah, okay. So I'm not sure what specifically you're looking for when it comes to which streams, but that's definitely something to think about. Yeah, I mean, we were particularly interested in the drains. Well, it's just part of the thing is, is that they just, uh, the, the, it's protocol was rivers, so it's possible they're the drains, okay. knowing region seven. Mm -hmm. and some of them are lakes and some of them are rivers, but rivers could totally be drains in region seven. Do you, do you have any <laughs> idea of when those data might be uploaded? Um, after we finish some of the bog, um, data okay. um so um it is you know i'm not sure it would probably be after I, i'm guessing it would probably be after um summer oh okay Good. lauren Thanks. this is autumn just me jump in those are the things that we talked about in that meeting we had a couple months ago so you guys we're already aware of what was coming in. Right. I sent you a spreadsheet about it. Yeah. 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 So. Um, Jay? <laughs> uh, I'll let Chad go because I think my dog's going to start howling. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I guess I'm happy to see you share the same um, interest as the regional boards in PFOS. And so my question is actually kind of maybe for Jay. Um, and I'm wondering, because we have a lot of archive samples, obviously, and then we don't really have funding to do a lot of PFAS right now for like the coast studies, but obviously we still do archives. So I'm wondering, Jay, from East, I think you mentioned the RMC was doing arc, uh, analyzing PFAS and archive samples. And I'm wondering if, if the archive tissue amounts were enough to do PFAS to a level that was, you found satisfactory or not. Sure enough, my dogs just did some major howling, but they they stopped now. <laughs> There's a siren out there gets them going. Um, yeah, we had, I don't really know the specific masses that were available, uh, but there weren't any problems. Um, I didn't hear of any problems with, uh, you know, due to limited mass in our archive sample. So that, that was fine. Okay. Um, so, so I'm kind of wondering, uh, I guess the thought process that I'm having for region nine is if we have a lot of archive samples um, sitting in freezers that I could, you know, chase funding down to do PFOS um, for a WEHA, is that something of interest for you, especially for some of the existing consumption advisories where we might be able to get PFOS data to make the advice more accurate in the future? Yeah, that is of interest, Chad. Uh, we're scoping developing an advisory tissue level now, but having uh, occurrence data in California fish is helpful as we think about developing that. So the more data we can have, the better, especially that most of it is in uh, San Francisco Bay. So it'd be great to have some in different parts of the state, especially down south. Yeah. I mean, so we've added it for the realignment, but that was all whole. And so, you know, they're still obviously would be a pretty big gap for us for uh, the filet stuff. Correct. Anna, along those lines, I think you could probably, you probably remember the details better than me, but um, we are going to be looking in, into our archives for potential PFAS analysis uh, with to use up some available budget. Can you maybe elaborate on that a little bit? I mean, that that was pretty up to date. We <laughs> have to um, circle back with um, Moss Landing and, uh, and SFEI on where our budget stands, um, given all of the other things that we want to do. But yeah, I think it's 
very likely that we will use some of our organics budget to process archives as that's available. Um, where like where those samples came from and how many and things like that, we're not quite sure yet, but it is on our minds and it's something that we're actively thinking through. So as um, we go forward with that, we'll stay in touch with you, Chad, because you know, your samples would be among the candidates. Great, and like I said, I'll try to chase down some extra funding on my end to, to get that done. Great. All right, so my questions were, I had a couple of things. Um, one is, um, Lauren, can you share that list for 2024, the docket, um, and we you know share that with the, the the group. I, I was thinking maybe you could just bring that to the next Stu meeting, but might be good for the group to have it sooner rather than later. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Oh, go, ahead. go ahead, Wes. Oh, yeah, we were planning on sharing that. We just need to get finalize our list and get approval right. from up above. But I see. All right. And also in the future, I, our idea is we would like to present it in the fall. So that way everyone has a better idea and there can be more discussion about prioritization of our prioritized water bodies. So that's what we're, we hope to do going forward. Great. Yeah. Yeah. We'd, we'd love to, you know, kind of make a short list and then just get input to tighten it up even more, you know, before the new year starts. And especially with uh, sort of local considerations, because we only know so much from our state level perspective and there's a lot that happens locally that sometimes we find find out during the course and sometimes we find out after which isn't ideal so hopefully yeah. that will smooth things out moving forward and i think too i just want to add for folks that weren't able to join um lauren's presentation last year y'all do a poll and revise this list annually, right? So that just because there's a list this year doesn't mean you're just gonna keep that for the next five years and not reconsider and pull a new data and things like that. So this is an ongoing process that you all take and review regularly. Um, and so, yeah, we can have a standing OEHA presentation extravaganza in, the, in every, fall, <laughs> every fall meeting, if you'd like. You That's make it sound very exciting, Anna. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Anna. Yeah, so we pull data every year and then run through our uh, prioritization protocol. And sometimes new water bodies will, will pop up, so depending on new data. Great. That's you know great information. And I know the, the group's very interested in that. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask about, I was curious about, you had you came up with a list of a few water bodies where you want to get more data, Pardee and Davis Creek, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering how uh, how those sort of came to the top of your list. Are there, because there, I'm sure there's a lot of other data gaps, you know, across the state. Um, how are, you know, why are those a priority for you guys? Yeah, I mean, those are just the ones that, <clears throat> you know, or just, they're very high in mercury or PCBs. And, you know, we have data to suggest, you know, that more sampling would be beneficial there. Um, you know, it's kind of in addition to the water bodies that we've already highlighted for the um, high contaminant water bodies analysis. So just wanted to highlight them. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, you had your hand up. Hi, yeah. <laughs> um, so the only thing I want to just kind of say is that um, if we decide to use the archive to analyze the PFOS, my concern, well, it's not really a concern. I understand these things are persistent, but we have these things, I don't know, MQOs, <laughs> measurement quality objectives. And so what happens is I actually have to, I hate using this word because it's so contentious, flag the data as a hold time error. So um, with that kind of in, um, in mind, 
is that the data is completely usable in my mind, except, you know, the integrated report's going to look at a hold time error and probably not use it for assessment. Just throwing that out there. But a WeHA could totally use it because the thing is, is that it's, it's a hold time error, but it's been frozen. There's a reason why we're looking at them. They're persistent. Yeah, and Jennifer, you and I have talked about this a little bit, something also on my mind in terms of increasing our documentation um, is to create an S standard operating procedure of sorts, basically a way to document all of the awesomeness that is in Jennifer's brain about flags and what they mean and which ones we should really take seriously and which ones you wanna review and consider, but know that the data is all still okay. And so that's something that is on our to-do list um, to, to get that documentation, to make it easier for folks to use the data and know how to use it appropriately. So um, we can communicate you know, that through that process, but then also, um, folks can reach out if they do a poll and they notice everything has this flag or whatever, and we can respond that way too. And I personally, since I work on the integrated report, I would worry less about the integrated report and more about actually having the data to share with the public. Right. Right. And the other thing that I kind of think about is that it is, even if you're just saying, Hey, what is there? Do we need to follow up on it? That's super important as well. And similarly, along Chad's lines too, um, you know, the data can be pulled into the Swamp Data Dashboard. Um, so it's easy for people to see which data are useful and actually pull from there instead of um, the raw data where we've done a little bit of our filtering and, and the magic that, that we have with our internal and partner expertise. Um, so I'm really looking forward to Michelle's presentation in April because I think that'll be a great tool for folks moving forward in terms of pulling swamp tissue data. Again, for those that need non-swamp data for other things, that's a different conversation and we can think about different resources for that, which we are, but um, yeah, it's a good thing to bring up Jennifer because we wanna make sure people use data appropriately, but sometimes that means saying, hey, yes, I see that flag. And also I'm a human that knows better than <laughs> a machine and we're gonna use it anyway, cause it's still good data. Yeah, Kelly. Um, I have a couple questions. So if we were curious, like, how would we find out just, I know Tom before he retired um, or had emailed me somewhat recently that we did have archived fish data and like, how would we find that info out and like where it's being archived? Um, second question, where, like what lab is the PFAS data being run out of or if we're currently doing any of that right now? And then just a comment on the whole time, like if this is really gonna be a big issue, like it seems like we could make our own QA code for this specific like instance where it might not be like this big red flag or something, you know, like archive fish data being used out of normal whole time, but frozen or something so that it would be like, not like such a red flag if we everyone thinks so that so it is Kelly, totally there's usable lab data. Batch comments. Kelly, there's lab batch comments. Uh -huh. People don't look at them. But could you have a different QA code besides whole like H? It's, you know, it, it, what I'm saying is that the whole the the Q the QA code is just a QA code. People really lean to look at the data a little more carefully because yeah. something can have a flag on it, but you need to see what does that ma mean for that particular batch. Right, so I think um, this is where the, the SOP might be helpful. I think mm -hmm. using consistent QA codes and standard controlled vocabulary is important to make sure um, our people can understand the quality of our data, but we can utilize uh, documentation to help folks tease out, okay, if I receive this flag, where should I look to know if I should um, heat it or, um, acknowledge it and move forward. And so that's the kind of documentation that I'd like to work on developing. Um, and then kind of moving backwards from your <laughs> questions, the lab we're using is our chemistry lab, um, S Babcock and SGS Access. 
right okay. now. Um, and then in terms of getting a list of archives and things like that, um, I think Autumn sent me a list recently, but um, feel free to chime in, Autumn or Jay, if there's something else that I'm missing. No, that list is current and accurate. So would you be able to share that with us, you know? Yeah, I can send it okay. to you. Thank you. Um, also, all of that information is um, in the database in the um, composite comments. If you guys look at the composite, it tells what archives we've retained. Um, it may not tell you if we've had to use that archive already, but I keep track of that here. Um, and we're only keeping them for like five years ish. So, um, but there are multiple places you can find that information and always contact me. Jay? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, uh, add a little bit to the earlier discussion about the archives um, in the, the measurement quality objective side of things, the whole time constraints um, and just um, highlight the disconnect between those hold times, like in the standard methods and what the research community does. It's common practice in the, in the persistent organic pollutant uh, research world to, to analyze archive samples years or even decades after the samples have been collected, as long as they're archived properly. So, so it's totally legitimate thing to do if if we're properly archiving samples like we do in 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 the bioaccumulation monitoring program we also do this very extensively in the rmp so it's totally fine from a scientific perspective <clears throat> thanks Jay. lauren yeah just a quick question i know that i've come across lab batch comments that i've had a hard time interpreting um, Jennifer, are you a, a good resource for understanding <laughs> what some of those mean? Yes. Okay. Good to know. Thanks. And we might, when we get closer, we're, we're doing a lot of things right now in our, in our program. So the, the standard operating procedures, um, is on the wish list, but when we get closer to that, we could put out a, like a ask for, things that people are seeing that they would like interpreted, <laughs> you know, lab batch comments or QA codes or whatever for our data users. And that way we can include that into the, the documentation that we generate. Any other questions for OEHA? Great. Well, thanks y'all. Um, I think with that, we are at, um, we're in the, in the break period now. So um, if you don't want to stay for the, the open forum for tribes, community-based organizations, and other agencies, feel free to jump off. Again, the meeting will be recorded. So um, maybe I could even just do the wrap up now and then um, leave it for the open forum if folks want to do that. Um, Sounds good. Okay, let me share my screen. Wow, my brain just like stopped. Has that ever happened for y'all? Where you're like, yeah, everything's fine. And then your brain's like, nope. Um, so mm -hmm. go ahead, Jay. Reboot. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, all right. So we're still going to have the open forum, but for those that just want to go through next steps now and then jump off, um, here we go. So we talked about upcoming meetings. Um, again, they'll all be recorded um, and the agendas will come out a, a week or so before the meeting and I'll send an email out through the safety work group list so folks can understand what and get excited about what's coming up. A reminder that folks need to register for the meetings. 
Um, the registration remains open until I think the end of the meeting. So if you have like a, you put a hold on your calendar, but you forgot to register, that's no problem. You can register at that time and get your link and jump on. Um, a couple of quick updates that I knew for myself, but if there are others that we should add to this list, please chime in. I'm going to be working on posting the um, cruise report from last year's monitoring, as I mentioned. Um, hopefully it's up next week, um, if not sooner. I'm also going to be posting the slides and the recording from yesterday's training series. So folks that weren't able to attend or um, for any reason, because uh, whatever, they are, you'll be able to see those resources on the training series page. A reminder, if you represent a tribe or you are partnering with a tribe that you think would be interested in the training series, please um, share a link to the page, share my information. We want to get that those resources out um, as broadly as possible to our California Native American tribal partners. If you represent a tribe or a community-based organization in the San Francisco region, or again, you partner with someone um, that is part of each of those groups, and they would like to stay informed or participate in the San Francisco region realignment process, again, please shoot me an email and I'll loop you in so you're a part of those communications and invitations. And just um, for those um, agency partners we're going that we've talked about or that will be included as invited guests, we'll be sending you your invitation hopefully next week. For the long-term monitoring priorities assessment, uh, or actually, with, were there any other action items for the quick updates that I might have missed? Okay, hearing none, great. For the long-term monitoring priorities assessment, um, if you are part of a tribe, an agency or community-based organization, um, and would like to give a presentation, um, kind of similar to what OEHA gave us today. Um, please let me know as soon as possible so we can get you on that February 28th agenda. Um, if you don't want a um, pre uh, long presentation, but you just want to chime in and say a few words, as I mentioned, there will be an open forum. You don't need to give me notice, just pop in and um, say what you, share what you want to share, and we'll take a note of that. If you if public speaking isn't your jam, um, but you still want to provide feedback, there's this priority bioaccumulation watching priority survey that we ask folks to complete by March 1st. And then um, I didn't hear any action. I, there might have been a couple of action items for the OEHA presentation. Um, I heard that um, we want to put um, OEHA on the agenda every fall to give their annual update, and I need to send Kelly a list of archives. Was there anything else that folks saw as an action item that we should add to the list? And also for us to share our putative list for this coming year. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Could you send me the list of our updated archives too, please? Since you asked so nicely, sure. Please. <laughs> Hey, Anna, it just occurred to me that that list was specifically to our program and not any of the um, regional project work. So I can create that for region six and region nine as well. Okay. Yeah. If, um, if you want to create that, is it easy to generate a list with like all of the regions identified? Yeah. It, yeah, it is because it's all in that insanely long composite ID. Um, um, but I will say if, if you guys, when you made your plans, if you didn't ask us to archive anything, uh, we didn't. And if you didn't specifically say you wanted archives for PFAS, we put them in glass. And so with a Teflon line lid and you can't do that. <laughs> so um, I will go through our um, our plastic archives and I'll, I can send out a list to Anna and she can distribute it or I can send it to all the regional heads that I know of, whatever we decide. Sounds great. Thanks, Autumn. Thanks for being awesome, Autumn. Thank you. Yeah, and I agree. I would. I think everyone's probably interested in the list from OEHA, but the 15 um, 
water bodies on the docket. So yeah, that would be great. Yeah, we'll either see if we can share it via email or if it will be as a presented at a STU meeting. And if there's time at the next long term feedback, I don't know if you'd want to put that in there, but that might be a possibility. Yeah, I mean, I'm planning on um, creating like a compiled document of all of the like templates and slides and stuff that were shared. So if you want to add that into your template as like the uh, at the end additional information or whatever, and then resend that to me, um, that's great. And we can capture it that way too. Okay, yeah, I'll, let me just check with management. And... Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. Anything else that I missed? Um, as per usual, um, I'm working on the notes from last week. So, um, the recording has already been posted on our meetings page from the January 24th meeting. Um, but I'll work on the notes and the meeting materials for today's meeting and get those posted and send our, the usual follow-up email to our stew email list. Um, if you haven't already, register for the upcoming meetings that are of interest to you. And um, we've been having a lot of meetings, but soon we'll be through the long-term monitoring priorities process and we'll have more space for um, guest speakers and folks to share about the exciting work that they're doing. So if you want to um, have a presentation at a future Stu meeting, um, we welcome that. And Or if you want to hear about a certain topic, please um, let me know so we can work on um, getting those on future agendas. Folks did do that last year, and I think we received five requests, and we heard from three or four of them. So um, we definitely want to keep moving through the request list and get those guest speakers so that the Stu is a place where folks want to hang out. And I think that's it. Anything else before we sign off for today? Okay, great. I am going to um, hang here just in case folks want to pop in and provide feedback for the open forum. Um, I, I have a feeling it's going to be a little bit quiet, but that's okay. Um, so if you want to jump off and continue on to your day, that's great. Um, a summary of if folks join and what that looks like will be included in the notes in the recording. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Stay Thanks dry. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thanks.